up? I'm Sergeant Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video. Today, I'm happy to present you guys with my October 2017 room tour. This room has been the heart of my YouTube channel for the past two years, where I've produced the vast majority of my unboxings, reviews, PC builds, just pretty much every single video. And it's also where I've done most of my PC and console gaming. This setup is sort of an extension and improvement of my previous setup. I've now got a much larger room in my new townhouse, which afforded me having a larger overall setup. I'm using the same IKEA lemon tables with the addition of one more table. And those of you who saw my previous room tour know that I like to have two different setups for editing and gaming respectively. While you can definitely get away with having one PC that does both pretty well, I love being able to finish editing a video, start it up rendering, and then hop over to my gaming setup without having to worry about having any performance decreases. On top of that, workstation and gaming PCs definitely benefit from having different display and storage setups. So hopping into the right side of my setup, we've got my editing rig sitting on some storage shelves. I like having my PCs off of the floor on display for everyone to see, really just me to see. It's based on the outdated but pretty venerable FX 8350 and currently holds both a GTX 770 and a recent edition of the AMD Fire Pro W9100. That's a workstation card I'm currently evaluating for content creation. This is one of the first PC builds I did on the channel and it served me well, but I will be replacing this with a more modern eight core build. I'll be using a new case, but I absolutely love this Corsair 760T, so I'll have to find something cool to do with it. But the PC is currently driving two different LG IPS displays. On the right, we've got my 34UM67P. This is a 21 by 9 ultra wide, which is great for gaming, content consumption, and especially editing. Having that nice wide display lets you stretch out your timeline and be able to see a ton. The other is an LG 27 inch IPS display, which matches up in height with the ultra wide and has a fairly similar color profile. Both are held up by a Loctec dual display gas spring monitor stand, which makes moving them around and adding removing cables really, really easy. Below these monitors are pretty much everything I need within arm's reach for video post-production, including my M-Audio Studio monitors, not very expensive, but they get the job done. I've got a USB 3.0 hub, hooking up all the rest of my peripherals, which include a USB 3.0 card reader, a bunch of external hard drives, my Scarlett 2i2 audio interface, which I use to record most of the audio for pretty much all my videos. Also got my Behringer Zynix 802 mixer, and of course the Audio-Technica ATH M50X headphones in the blue. In terms of input devices, I've got a CM Storm Stealth, which I hope to swap out soon for a full-size keyboard with a numpad, which I think really, really helps for editing a lot with macros. My mouse is a Logitech G602. It's a wireless gaming mouse, but the battery life has been great, and the extra MMO style buttons on the side are absolutely awesome for macros as well. The mouse pad is a Still Series QC10, which you'll see again in the gaming side of my setup. I've been using these for years and absolutely love them. So underneath my lemon desk are some Alex shelves from Ikea as well, where I store all sorts of small little items like extra mice, audio cables, controllers and cable management items speaking of cable management it's something i put a lot of work into in my setups i've got multiple videos outlining how i use ikea signums to keep my cables as tidy as possible which is quite difficult for me especially seeing as i change a lot of my setup pretty frequently Overall, I like my editing setup. I think a second ultra wide would be awesome. I am also hoping to get something like maybe like a 40 inch 4K display to put on the wall between my two setups so I can use it as an extra screen and just have videos and streams up there while I'm working and such. Let me know what you guys think of that. All right, moving on to my gaming setup, we'll start with my consoles. I've got them stacked up on this little monitorizer thing. The Xbox One is the Halo 5 Guardians Collector's Edition. I'm a pretty big Halo fan fan and tend to pick up most of the limited edition hardware for the series and you'll see more of that in a bit. My go-to controller for the Xbox is the Elite controller. I played a little bit of competitive Halo 2 and Halo 3 back in the day and always wanted a scuff when I saw them become popular but when Xbox released this I knew I had to pick it up. The paddles, the thumbsticks, the triggers, the overall build quality and software customization make it one of the best controllers out in my opinion. 
Below it, we've got my Call of Duty Black Ops 3 PS4. COD is probably tied with Battlefield is my second most played shooter series. I've got a few posters for both those games up around the setup as well. I've got both these consoles set up so I can play them on my center monitor in my gaming setup. And they're running through an HDMI switch and my Elgato game capture cards for streaming and capturing console games when I need footage. But moving on to my PC gaming setup, this is probably the thing I'm most proud of in the room. It's all centered around Arashi Kage, which is my all white PC build featuring an i7-4790K, the Asus Sabertooth Mark S or Sobronco motherboard, two EVGA GTX 980s, which are currently out of the rig and being painted white so they'll match the rest of the build. And that's all housed in my white fractal design Define R5. I love this build. I've done videos on pretty much the entire process of selecting it, unboxing the parts, building it, and doing a lot of the mods. So check those out after this video. The most recent mod I've been working on is this transparent LCD side panel inspired by the iBuy Power Snowblind build. I saw that case and started doing some research and I saw that another modder from Modzu had already done a build like that. So I did some research and started putting it all together. And I knew Arashikage would be absolutely perfect for the build. I've essentially moved the backlight from an LCD monitor, miniaturized and swapped out some of the electronics and shoved it all onto my side panel. Since the back panel is gone, the case internals kind of have to serve as the backlight in combination with an absolute butt ton of LEDs and using steam wallpaper paper engine plus rain meter and some other programs I'm able to completely customize what comes up on the screen to match maybe like the game I'm playing and show system internals or just play videos that look really really awesome on it. I'm also able to get stuff like Spotify and some visualizers and stuff like that up there. I think it's an absolutely stunning mod and the customization possibilities are pretty much endless. I've recorded everything I've done and we'll have a series of videos on it, but it's not quite done yet, so stay tuned. Then on top to spice up the build a little bit, I've got some replicas of the katanas used by Storm Shadow in the G.I. Joe movies. If you don't know, Arashikage actually means Storm and Shadow in Japanese and it's the ninja clan that Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes are members of. Geek as hell, I know, but I think it's dope. I've got some custom vinyl decals on the front of the case with the Arashikage symbol and text that I did myself. And then I've also got Storm Shadow's eyes, which were actually made by my buddy Reicher. Then finally below that, I've got my custom design labs Xbox controller with Sergeant Ballistic on it, which kind of matches the build and my brand colors overall. And I think it all comes together for a little bit of an over the top build and only thing else I can think of to really, really improve it would be to do a full uh, kind of white water cooling loop, but time will tell if that happens or not. In terms of the displays attached to Arashikage, I've got three 144 hertz monitor. The center is a 27 inch Acer. With G-Sync, it's flanked by two older 24-inch BenQ displays from my previous setup. The color on the Acer is pretty good and I really enjoy gaming on it. I think 27 inches is a great size for a desktop monitor. The other two are older TN panels, so they're not as good in terms of color reproduction. But honestly, I don't ever do any multi-monitor or surround gaming. I primarily use the side screens for streaming and having social media and VoIP programs up on the side while I'm gaming. So I feel like I'm kind of wasting the refresh rates a little bit. Under these displays is my Sound Blaster X7 audio DAC and amp combo. I really like having an external audio interface. It actually helps with streaming and recording multiple audio tracks when you're recording gaming footage and such. Connected to it is my custom gaming headset, which is a combo of the Audio-Technica ATH 8700Xs, which are an open headphone, and attached to that is my ModMic 4.0. I love the quality of audio and the sound stage on the these headphones. It's something you don't get out of a lot of gaming headsets and for $50 the mod mic does a pretty good job for gaming and VoIP. So the keyboard over here has been switched out kind of a lot since my G15 that you guys saw in the previous video. Currently I have the Corsair Strafe with Cherry MX Reds on it. And then next to that I've got the Logitech G502 Proteus Core which I actually just switched in to replace my G500 which started acting a little bit wonky after like 10 years of using it. It's also sitting on a still Series QC10 mouse pad. 
Now I love my gaming setup and I use it pretty much daily. Let me know what you guys think of it and what you might do to make it better in the comments below. So moving around left, we've got this section where I've kind of dedicated it to displaying a bunch of stuff like headphones, headsets, games, and controllers and collector's editions. A lot of collector's editions. I've reviewed a quite a few gaming headsets and headphones on the channel. I like keeping them around so I don't have to swap when I move from console to console, upstairs and downstairs. And having extra is really, really great for when friends come over to game. And the biggest reason is having them for comparison with other headsets that come in for review. And I just figured a wall of headphones was a cool little feature I could have. And I did this before I saw that Linus video. Below that, we start seeing some of my collector's editions from games like Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2. I love statues and figures and generally prefer them to other things like bags and notepads and stuff like that when they come in collector's editions. The mini fridge from Black Ops 3 was pretty cool though, I have to admit, and I've got that sitting next to my gaming setup. Here you see a little shelf I use to store a bunch of my older and some new console games, as well as still cases from both console and PC games that come in those collector's editions. And then we start to get into the Halo collection, AKA Halo Addiction. As I mentioned, I'm a massive Halo fan. I haven't always had the money to buy every collector's edition game and console right when they came out, but I've tried to get most of the stuff that I really, really wanted, but couldn't afford into my collection. I think my favorite two items have to be the Halo 3 Xbox 360. I just love that color and wish they would have done the Halo 5 collector's edition console and you know, kind of Master Chief Green. And then the Noble Team statue from Reach, I really, really love as well. It's got the just the whole ensemble and it looks really, really cool. I'm always looking to expand my collection. So if you know of something that I absolutely need, let me know. And if it's not too much cash, I'll probably want to add it to my collection. Below all the Halo gear is just a hodgepodge of other things things like some mobile and handheld gaming items you can see here i've got my original nvidia shield and a ds in this little cubby i've got a whole area dedicated to normal batteries and rechargeable batteries i love this charger by the way it's a bit pricey but supports AA and AAA batteries and has a bunch of smart charging features so i feel really really comfortable leaving it plugged in with batteries in it it won't overcharge then we've got some boxes for some of my old phones including my original htc g1 aka the dream Hashtag Android since day one. A lot more boxes for stuff like RAM, SSDs, hard drives, and of course CPUs. I've got quite a few from both red and blue teams. Also down here are all of the boxes for all of the Nvidia shields I have. You already saw the original portable, but also the tablets and the Android TV, which I actually won in a video contest from Nvidia. I love the shield products. The shield portable was actually the very first tech video on my channel. So go check that out if you want me to feel embarrassed. So next we have more storage space because you can never have enough storage, especially when you collect as much crap as I do and love tech as much as I do. I've got most of the boxes for all of my collector's edition games, consoles, and controllers still. Speaking of controllers, if you guys didn't know, I have a little bit of a addiction for limited edition controllers, specifically ones for the Xbox One. So up top here, I've got my little collection of all of them. Honestly, I don't use any of them really at all. They're mostly just for display. I used to kind of grab one and sync it up when I played a specific game like Forza or Halo. But as I mentioned, I use the Elite controller for all, pretty much everything now. I've got unboxing videos for pretty much all of these. So if you guys are interested, go check out those videos on the channel. Below here is where I store most of my camera gear like lenses, batteries, backdrops, green screens, fill reflectors, audio stuff, just a big old hodgepodge of stuff I can get to pretty easily while I'm filming and need to change my camera setup. All right, we're getting to the end of the tour and the opposite side of the room, which you guys probably have never seen before from this angle. First, we have my table that I use to queue up stuff, getting ready to be reviewed or filmed. I also use it for build videos. You probably noticed it sitting in the middle of the room and a lot of those videos. I've got a couple cases on there right now. I've got builds planned for those and I'll be putting out some content around them as soon as I get all of the parts in. Some of those parts you'll see just in a second as we check out the super, super behind the scenes closet where I store, well, mostly boxes for tech I'm using, reviewing, as well as stuff I've been sent or picked up that I'll be using in different future videos. 
CPUs, GPUs, motherboards, RAM, M.2 SSDs, normal SSDs, hard drives, coolers, keyboards, mice, headsets, earphones, PSUs, basically all the super duper tech sexiness is in this closet. Up top, we've got more boxes and just stuff I'm pack riding away. Then on the left side, we've got more boxes for cases and TVs and a little bag with a bunch of stuff like my monopod, light stands, backdrop holders, and stuff like that. One of the really, really cool things I have are all of the passes I've gotten from different conventions and events I've gone to since starting my YouTube channel. CES, GDC, PAX East, NVIDIA press conferences, AMD press events, industry party lanyards, all that kind of stuff. I'm super, super blessed in a lot of ways. Above owning all the cool stuff I own, some of the best experiences I've had in the YouTube scene have been getting to travel and meet other people with shared interests from around the world and just getting to talk about it and hang out and meet new friends. It's been super, super cool. But that is it for this video. Another super long room slash double setup tour in the bag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been two years in the making and I'm a bit sad to say it will actually be gone soon. Likely by the time you're seeing this video, I'll be in a new house and working on a new setup. I will be doing videos with time lapses showing the creation of that and a new setup video as well. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification button if you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check the description for links to videos and products and my social media. Hit me up on there if you have any questions or just wanna chat about tech. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.